Thank you. Resuming debate. A member for Lakeland. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honored to speak in support of Bill S-217, also known as Wins Law. And I want to congratulate and commend all of the hard work of my colleague from St. Albert Edmonton yep. in advancing yeah. this bill, yep. as yeah. well as the comprehensive case that the member from Medicine Hat, Cardston Warner, made earlier based on his long experience as a chief of city police. Uh, it speaks volumes. Our advocacy speaks volumes to both the family of Constable Wynne and to the thousands of other families who have lost loved ones to previously convicted criminals. For most Canadians, Saturday, January 17th, 2015 was just a normal day. We were out doing errands, visiting with family and friends or going to work. But for the Wynne family, it was a day that changed their lives forever. The day Constable David Wynne was stolen from them. As we all know by now, in the early morning hours that day, Constable David Wynn and Auxiliary Constable Derek Bond were patrolling in St. Albert, Alberta, checking license plates outside of a casino. After finding one flag disconnected to an outstanding arrest warrant, they went into the casino to arrest Sean Wren. A career criminal with a dangerous past, Wren had several warrants out for his arrest, one having only been issued a few days earlier. He had at least 100 offences, 100 offences dating back to 1994, and many of those charges included confrontations with police officers. Since 2010, Wren had been sentenced to a total of 10 years in jail for offences that varied from possession of a pro prohibited firearm, breaking and entering, and theft yet he was not serving time in prison. He was walking the streets, and he turned from career criminal to murderer in four seconds, all because of a loophole, a loophole that we as legislators can fix before this happens again. We can and we must do more than express sadness. As our Liberal colleague said earlier, we must act so we can stop this from happening again because there is no question there's no question that constable Wynn's murder was preventable wren should never have been given bail but in september 2014 after an arrest on several charges which included possession of a prohibited weapon and an outstanding arrest warrant for failing to appear in court he had been released on a 4500 dollar bail during the hearing, there was no mention, no consideration of Wren's lengthy criminal past. No mention of how, in 2009, Wren attacked an ex-girlfriend, choking her, ripping out her hair, and breaking her collarbone. He forced that girlfriend and her infant daughter to sleep in a room with him while he held a loaded gun because he was feeling paranoid. Was this recounted during his bail hearing? No. Neither was the fact that he was subject to a lifetime firearms ban that he posed a flight risk, and that he had demonstrated over and over again complete and utter disregard for previous court orders. This bill makes sense. It seeks to amend Section 518 of the Criminal Code, which reads, a prosecutor may lead evidence of a bail applicant's criminal history. This bill would change the word may to shall, making it mandatory for prosecutors to lead with any evidence relevant to accused criminals past. The bill would further amend the, section, the same section to include previous convictions, outstanding charges and failures to appear as criterion that may be considered to deny an accused bail. Wynne's law will protect everyday Canadians. It will protect all of us and it will protect law enforcement officers from those who should not be out on the streets, like Wren, by ensuring informed decisions can be made, enabled by knowledge of the criminal record of an accused. It's common sense, and it's just. This bill has received overwhelming support from communities all over Canada. The Mounted Police Professional Association of Canada, the Centre for Abuse Awareness, and the former Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Alberta, Jonathan Dennis, who was in Cabinet at the time of Wynne's murder, they all support this bill. It easily passed the Senate Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee unanimously. And then the Senate passed the bill by an overwhelming majority. Rank and file law enforcement officers have given their support to this legislation. But incredibly, Inexplicably, the Liberals don't agree, and they vowed to vote against this life-saving bill. In November, the Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of Justice said Wynne's law would, quote, unnecessarily complicate and lengthen the bail process Absolutely and remove discretion not. from the Crown. The Minister of Justice has also said that, quote, the measures that are articulated in this bill 
are measures that are in place at this time. But they aren't. That just isn't the case. Of course, many prosecutors do present criminal history at a bail hearing, but some don't. And that's the problem. That's the problem that we can fix. Bill, C, Bill S-217 does not impose any undue burden or complications on the Crown or on law enforcement. It does not infringe upon the discretion of a judge or justice of the peace at a bail hearing to make a determination on the question of bail. Decisions will still be made based on the specific facts and circumstances of the individual case and with a complete picture of the accused and the risk to Canadians. This isn't about politics. It's about a life. A life that could have been saved and many others that could be saved as a result. I urge my colleagues opposite to do the right thing and to support this bill so another mother doesn't have to explain to her kids that a loophole helped kill their dad. That a preventable measure could have saved a life. RCMP officers in all levels of law enforcement and first responders serve Canadians selflessly 365 days of the year. My mother-in-law, Diane Saskia, has worked in the Two Hills RCMP Detachment Centre for almost 40 years. She's seen firsthand their brave and compassionate dedication, sacrifice, and the important role of RCMP officers in Alberta's rural communities. Here in the House of Commons, it's incumbent on us to ensure there are safeguards in place to protect those who choose a life of service and risk to themselves for all Canadians. Constable Wynne's widow, Shelley McInnes Wynne, has been a tireless champion for this bill. On behalf of all Canadians, this strong woman is advocating for the successive passage of Wynne's law. Her determination and her courage are unwavering. Last summer, Ms. McInnes Wynne gave powerful and emotional testimony at the Senate Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee. She asked those present to close their eyes for four seconds. She said, in those four seconds, a constable was taken away from his community. A husband was taken away from his wife. A father was taken away from his three sons. And a brother was taken away from his mother and sisters in four seconds. Every day I wake up wishing that I could take those four seconds back, but I can't. There is nothing I can do to change that. Every day I have to live my life alone, not have Dave by my side, enjoying the moments we were supposed to have together as a family and as a husband and wife. Every day his children have to experience new things and new milestones without their dad. They don't have any more chances to make new memories. Changing this one simple word could save a lifetime of happiness for someone else, and that someone else could have easily been you. Dave was the unfortunate one that happened to be there that night, but it could have easily been anyone else. Four seconds represent the time when Ms. McInnes Wynne went from a wife to a widow. In four seconds, her world was shattered. In four seconds, a sister lost a brother. Parents lost their son. A wife lost a loving husband, and three young sons lost their hero. All their lives changed forever. It will take less than four seconds, less than four seconds, to stand up and to vote yes for Wynne's Law. Less than four seconds to vote for a law that will prevent future senseless murders and will protect innocent Canadians everywhere. And on behalf of the people of Lakeland, I urge my colleagues to do so. Thank you.